Okay, hi everybody. So today we're going to talk about a myotrophic lateral sclerosis. This is more commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It's also known as ALS. Um, but anyways, that's what we're going to talk about today. So basically what this is, it's, it's a condition in which the nerves of the, the upper motor neurons, which are in the brain, and the lower motor neurons, which are in the spinal cord, start to degenerate and die. So upper motor neurons, which we're going to call UMN, and lower motor neurons, which we are going to call LMN, degenerate and die. Okay, so they're going to degenerate and die. So let's talk about what these are real quick. So let's talk about upper motor neurons first. So if I were to draw a picture of a brain and you're looking at the brain from the side. All right, so this is a picture of a brain from the side. And right up in here in the brain, you have an opening between the solid parts of the brain. And this is going to be called the central sulcus. Okay. So this is my central sulcus. That's right there. Now, in front of my central sulcus, I am going to have basically nerves or, or the brain, the solid part of the brain, which is going to be right here. And this is going to be called my precentral gyrus. Okay? And that's basically the solid part. When you look at the brain, what you're looking at is the pre you're looking at gyri. That's plural for gyrus. So this is where my motor movements start. So what I'm going to do real quick is again, this is where motor starts. Motor meaning muscle. So this is where my motor movements start. My muscle movements start here, right? They're gonna start here. So the name of the track is called the corticospinal track. Okay, so we have the corticospinal track. Now I'm gonna draw this another way, because so, what you're doing right now is you're looking at it this way. I'm gonna turn this way and pretend like I don't have a front part of my face. You're just looking in at the brain, which has been cut in half. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. And now, I'm gonna go like this. Um, we're gonna go like this and say this is the, the brain. This is my, that's not my central sulcus anymore. But anyways, and then I'm going to have my brain stem. And then down here, I'm going to have the spinal cord. So the spinal cord, I'm going to draw as if, instead of a person being straight up like this, imagine it's a person laying down and you were to slice them in half and then be looking into their spinal cord. So that's what I'm going to draw down in here. So it looks something like this. I'm going to go like this, and then up like this, and then around like this, and then you have things like this inside of it. So, once again, I am going to have my corticospinal tract is going to start up here. Now, the corticospinal tract is going to come down, and when it's in here, this is an upper motor neuron. Okay, because it's in the brain. This is gonna be significant in a little bit. As it comes down, it can either come straight down to the spinal cord and then go out to the body, or it can come down, cross over to the other side and then it's gonna come out and go out to the body. The one thing it can do also is, here's the, uh, here's my brainstem. 
So in my brainstem, it could also meet with cranial nerves. It can also meet with cranial nerves. So what's going to happen in ALS is it can affect cranial nerves. When I have an upper motor neuron lesion, I get different symptoms than when I have a lower motor neuron lesion. So this is my lower motor neuron. And what I mean by lesion is damage, but we're not... So it's going to have different effects. So now, what happens in this? Because it's affected motor, one of the things that's going to happen is, like we said, the, the nerves are going to degenerate and die. So one of the things that's going to happen is people lose the ability to move their muscles. Okay, because doesn't it make sense if I'm up here and this nerve and this nerve starts to die, or I'm down here and the nerve starts to die, I won't be able to move their muscles, or they won't be able to move their muscles. Okay, so um, usually this is going to start in the extremities, the arms and the legs. So it usually starts. In extremities, the other thing is extremities. The other thing, like we said, it can affect cranial nerves. So some of the cranial nerves that it affects are the cranial nerves that help you swallow. So sometimes one of the first symptoms can also be difficulty swallowing. And we call this aphasia. Okay, so we're going to have difficulty swallowing. Now, the, uh, there's a few other things that can happen too. Um, when it affects the upper motor neurons, you can get like a spastic paralysis, but you're also gonna get a, what we call a positive Babinski sign. What a Babinski sign is, is that's when you take an object and rub, rub it on the bottom of the foot and the toes will flare back, okay? The other thing that can eventually happen is if I have nerves, that are going out to the diaphragm or to respiratory muscles and they get damaged, what will happen is the person will no longer be able to breathe and they'll die from respiratory failure. So the bad thing is um, it starts in the extremities it's, and it starts to work its way toward the, the chest or the torso area. Um, the sensory nerves, sensory nerves are unaffected And so because they're unaffected, um, the person can still do most things besides walk and things such as that. Usually cognitively, there's no problems there. Uh, so the person's aware of what's going on. I often describe this as what I read in a book one time is somebody said this is like having a ringside seat to your own death. So once again, what we're looking at is the fact that we have upper motor neurons, which are nerves in the brain that control muscle, start to die. We have um, the neurons, lower motor neurons, which are in the spinal cord, and what they will do, and the cranial nerves, and what they will do is they will also start to die. It does not affect your senses, so your taste, your smell, all of that, your, your vision and your hearing, all of that should still be fine. It's just everything else is starting to die that's motor. So that's basically it. Oh, and one of the odd things about this too is you get the con a condition where there'll be uncontrollable laughter or uncontrollable crying too. Um, and I'm not sure what the cause of that is. And again, as far as what causes this, about 5% of the time it's genetic. Most of the time they don't know. It could be due to some bad proteins that are up in the, uh, that can't get into the nucleus. They start to gather around, protein aggregates is what they call it. And that could actually start to damage <clears throat> other organelles that are actually inside the uh, cell. So that's it for um, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis. And I hope you enjoyed this video.